Angeles. <laughs> and don't be bashful about it. <laughs> now, I confess why I love this so much is that mainly because, as a liberal religious person, it makes most of my liberal friends and colleagues sit up straight, stare into my face, lift their eyebrows a little bit, <laughs> as though they are saying to me, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> be a what? <laughs> yeah, be an evangelist. And don't be bashful about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look, you know, it's a great word that has been hijacked by the religious right. But, you know, it's not the word that's important. I just say it because it, you know, it always draws a little, a little attention. It's not the word that's important. It's the spirit behind the word that's important. I've been around the ministry long enough to have seen too many stagnant, ordinary, monocultural congregations doing a variation of the same thing year after year, not many surprises in the congregation, and not making many new diverse connections or creating new multicultural entry points. I have experienced too many congregations in too many vital and great locations become over time unable to remain connected with the constantly evolving community around them. I mean, I always thought that, 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 that in the East Village where I was, I always thought that, that the, uh, the East Village changed every five years. So. If the church didn't change every five years, we're behind, way behind the, behind the, the eight ball, definitely. And so there's got to be a constant change because everything is evolving all the time. And then also um, uh, incapable, really, of connecting with the broader, diverse society in which we all live. I mean, there was a person who told me and said, well, you know, um, my neighborhood is, um, uh, is all white. I mean, that's our, that's our neighborhood. And so that's what our congregation is. <laughs> that's okay. <Wow. laughs> and after the worship, I went to the local Home Depot, which was only just a few blocks away. And my God, first of all, the Home Depot was packed. And secondly, <laughs> <laughs> there was a diversity of people culture, languages, different being spoken on Depot. I said, oh, well, that's just one example. So I went to the ShopRite. Uh, maybe some of you don't have that. That's a, that's a grocery store. I went to a ShopRite. Same thing. Pack. I couldn't find a parking spot. And, and I, uh, so I barred away, walked in there, and here there, people pushing your old carts. And I look over here, and uh, people of different culture. I said, forget about it, that this is a, a, a uh, uh, the, the only uh, uh, one cultural community. If you're in, if you're not in a multicultural community, uh, I tell you, you aren't really looking. But two, it's going to be because every community in our nation is going to be uh, multicultural. So this is a good time to get on board with <laughs> because otherwise we'll lose out. Um, uh, I'm speaking way too long here. Let's see. Uh, so. Uh, well, anyway, uh, but, but, but that's, 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 that's what's happened. When I, the problem when I go visiting congregations, um, you know, I, I ask myself sometimes after, after I, I see this, I ask myself, you know, so, so what is this about? I mean, what is it really about? For me, it's a congregational leadership problem. Church leaders, and I'm talking about all church leaders, need to be encouraged, they need to be challenged, 
They need to be supported to reach out broader, to stretch out the outreach of justice wider, and to always, 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 always keep creating more multicultural entry points into the church, from the community, and into the community from, from the, the, the church. I call it evangelism. Uh, I'm not bashful about it, never have been, but most, if not all, of my friends and colleagues use different words to describe the same process. 